Hey, how you doing? In a previous video we addressed this issue by focusing on bladder problems. This time we'll focus on identifying the types of incontinence that exist and giving you clues to improve your management. There are four types of incontinence. Stress, urge, overflow and functional. Stress incontinence occurs when urine leaks from putting pressure on the bladder, such as when coughing or sneezing, from a laughing fit, or from carrying heavy objects. It is quite common in women, and can appear even before menopause. Urge incontinence occurs when the urge to urinate comes suddenly, and there is no time to get to the toilet. It can occur in people with diabetes, Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, multiple sclerosis or from having suffered a stroke. Overflow incontinence is when urine drops leak from a bladder that is always full. A man may have trouble emptying his bladder if the prostate has become so enlarged that it blocks the urethra. Diabetes and spinal cord injuries can also cause this problem. Functional incontinence affects older people who have good bladder control but are unable to get to the toilet in time because of arthritis or other conditions that prevent them from moving quickly enough. There are more treatments available today than ever before. The most suitable will be the one that best fits the kind of incontinence you have and its severity. But in general, you should start with the simplest and safest treatments. Only if they prove insufficient should one consider other options. It is best to start by training bladder control. And there are four strategies for this. Kegel exercises, by regulation scheduling toilet visits, and lifestyle changes. Kegel exercises help strengthen the pelvic floor muscles. The best way to identify these muscles is to cut off the urine stream. After emptying the bladder, in a lying, sitting or standing position, these muscles contract and relax every three seconds, ten times. These exercises are especially useful at the beginning of an incontinence problem. Performing the exercise one time in each posture, lying, sitting, and standing, every day, the results will come after three six weeks. Bioregulation is a more sophisticated way to identify the pelvic floor muscles, in order to perform strengthening exercises more effectively. In the office, the doctor places a small sensor in the vagina or anus, and the signals from the contraction are sent to a screen, which will show something like a ball that changes size with the contractions. The schedule of visits to the toilet consists of establishing, for example, that every hour you have to go to the bathroom. You can gradually lower the frequency until you find the optimal pattern. By combining this technique with pelvic floor exercises, urge and overflow incontinence can be reversed. And finally, there are lifestyle changes, which can mean losing weight, quitting smoking, cutting down on alcohol, as well as coffee, tea, or soda, preventing constipation, and avoiding carrying heavy objects. If all this is insufficient, then the following steps must be considered. Medication and surgery. Certain medications help empty the bladder completely, while others improve bladder control to prevent leakage. Some women find that an estrogen-based vaginal cream works well, relieving urge incontinence. Others with stress incontinence benefit from injections of a substance that thickens the area around the urethra because it helps close the bladder opening. Finally, there is always surgery, which may be the only solution if the bladder has changed position, or if it is blocked by a prostate that is too large. People in the later stages of Alzheimer's disease often have problems with incontinence. It may be because they don't realize they need to urinate, forget to go to the bathroom, or can't find their path. In these cases, it helps not to offer them caffeinated beverages, such as coffee, tea or certain soft drinks, but don't limit the water, obviously. As for the toilet, it should be kept in order, with a clear path, and perhaps, with the light on all the time, it may be helpful to schedule bathroom visits. And of course, you should provide absorbent underwear that is easy to poo on and take off. That's all for today. I hope I've been helpful. Thank you very much, and see you in the next video.